world. The man takes a sword and says, hey, all of you, like me now, if I had a gun, so all of you except Islam, say, la ilaha illallah. What is it worth? What is it worth? Rubbish. When Sheikh Ahmed Didat held a meeting at Acton Town Hall London, entitled, Judaism, Christianity, or Islam, a white questioner again asked about false accusations against the Islamic religion, and that is that the Islamic religion is a violent religion that forces non-Muslims to convert to Islam by coercion. It seems that non-Muslims especially those from Western countries, have been brainwashed by these accusations. Even though Islam never forces anyone to embrace Islam but only in a wise way, and Islam is a religion that prohibits its followers from fighting non-Muslims without justifiable reasons. However, Sheikh Ahmed Didat also clarified the accusation again, where his answer finally made the questioner look ridiculous again due to his question. The brother says Jesus did not use force to promote his religion, did Muhammad use force to promote his religion? Sword. The sword, not force, I'll clarify the sword, to get people into the fold of his religion. This is a very common accusation, allegations against Islam, that Islam was spread at the point of the sword. That's the commonest fabrication that is invented against Islam. Look at history. One man against the whole world, Thomas Carlyle, a British. In 1840, he delivered a series of talks in London, and he defends Muhammad, Thomas Carlyle, about the sword. One of the greatest thinkers of the past century, a British, an Englishman, an Anglican. He said, the sword indeed, with regards to the charge of the sword, he said, the sword indeed, but where will you get your sword? He said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. When you start a movement, there's no political party. There's no council of churches to, be, to create a bishop or a pope. There's nothing like that. You know the history of Muhammad, starting from the minutest beginnings. By the time he's six, his mother dies. Before he's born, his father died. He's doubly often by the time he's six. He's looking after his uncle Abu Talib's goats. At the age of 40, for the first time, he declares his mission and persecution. If you know the history of the early Sahabas, the companions, persecution. To such an extent that twice they had to flee to Abyssinia, the Muslims. Then Muhammad had to flee from Makkah to Medina. Where is the sword? In other words, he must force the Quraysh and say, you, accept Islam on the chop of your head. Where is the sword? He said, every new opinion at its beginning is precisely in the minority of one. In one man's head alone, there it dwells as yet. It is one man against all men that he take a sword and try to propagate with that will do little for him. One man against all men, the whole world. The man takes a sword and says, hey, all of you, like me now, if I had a gun, so all of you except Islam, say, la ilaha illallah. What is it worth? What is it worth? Rubbish. He says, first get your sword, meaning you need people to accept, voluntary acceptance. The Quran says, la ikraha fi deen, there is no compulsion in religion, it's worthless. You are a non-Muslim, I take it. We are a majority here. So we get around you and say, now come on, accept Islam, <laughs> or we put a knife through you. What is it worth? Rubbish. But this is the chart, look at history. Now, while he's in Medina, the Quraysh, the Mushriks, the idol worshippers, they come to, towards Medina, and there's a battle at Badr. The guys came 200 miles, the Muslims came out a few miles to meet them. The second battle, Uhad, Medina itself. Third one, the Battle of the Trench. Who is doing the fighting? With regards to Jesus, now with regards to Saul, in the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, verse 27, Jesus says, For those my enemies, who would not that I should reign over them, bring them hither and slay them before me. Luke 19.27.
check it out. For those by enemies, who are his enemies? Anyone? He doesn't want Jesus to rule him. He said, they are his enemies. Bring them hither. Bring them here. And slay them in my sight. Kill them. Then, at the last supper, if you remember, he's telling his disciples, do you remember I told, sent you out on your mission of preaching and healing? And when I sent you out, I told you that you must not carry no spare shoes, no purse, no sticks. Right? I said, right. Did you lack like anything? They said, no. But now I tell you, those of you who's got no swords must sell their garments and buy them. Am I quoting correctly? Sell your garments and buy swords to do what? Pear apples or bananas? What? To do what? What do you do with the thought? And then he goes to the garden of Gethsemane. He puts eight at the gate. He says, stay here and watch with me. Keep guard. What are they going to watch what? Then he takes with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Goes further in. And he tells them, wait ye here while I go and pray yonder. Eight at the gate to do what? Three in a line of defense to do what? To watch what? Keep guard. Then when the Roman soldiers, the Jews brought the Roman soldiers, the tables were turned against him. But Peter, he had the sword. So he says, Master, shall we smite them with the sword? We, plural, more than two, more than one at least. Hmm? Did they have the swords with them? Shall we smite them with the sword? Did they have swords? Who instructed them to have swords? Jesus, to do what? Cutting apples? Pears? What? No, to kill people. But the tables are turned. So now he's a Peter already. He slashed off the ear of one of the, uh, one of the persons, you know, the guards. And Jesus now realizes that if it comes to the crunch, all will be massacred. So he says, put down your sword, because he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Didn't he know that when he told them to arm themselves? That he who lives by the sword shall die by the sword. Then why did he give them the wrong advice? No. It was the right advice. Thinking that the Jews will come along. Jews against Jews. It might be a different type of a battle. Than compared to trained Roman soldiers. So now the tables are turned against him. So he says put down your sword. So the sword is ever there. In the hands of Jesus. At the temple he whipped the Jews. You remember? Whether with a whip you hit a man or with a sword. You are. A violent person. You agree? Whether you hit a man with a blow, I'm violent. With a whip, I'm violent. If I have a sword, I chop off your head, I'm still violent. So Jesus Christ didn't spare anybody. The sword was there in his hand. If he had the opportunity, he would have done the job. You know, better than Muhammad could have ever done. Thank you very much.